Welcome back. So I got this ball gouge as a gift uh, when I bought the lathe, new lathe, and uh, it's still in its package. And I want to do a video on what's probably the easiest way for you to sharpen and how I would sharpen it. Uh, now there is a video on sharpening that I did uh, a month ago or so, um, which is more in depth. And uh, yeah, let's go, let's open it up and uh, see what we got. So it's a Record Power brand. Let me just open it. So there's still wax on top. Now it comes with, I believe it's something like a traditional grind have some uh, use for it let's say at the bottom of the bowl and it depends on how, what bevel do you put on and uh, stuff like that uh, but this I want to put more of a fingernail shape on it and I'll show you the easiest way and uh, the way I sharpen this is a half inch a ball gouge I believe Americans measure the bar which is 20 uh, 12 sorry it's 12 mil uh, which is a half an inch and uh, the English uh, measuring system is the flute distance which is 3 8 or 10 millimeters okay so here is that um, traditional let's say grind uh, now the important thing to know is that this is a V uh, V flute ball gouge which means uh, the wings or the side of the flute is flat or straight. Um, I do prefer the elliptical shape or uh, parabolic shape, whatever it's called. Uh, I mostly use uh, Henry Taylor or Hamlet, uh, even Crown tools, which, uh, which has um, that parabolic flute shape. Now, to sharpen this, uh, the first thing is to put some of the uh, fingernail shape on it which means I have to extend the wings further back 5 degrees is okay to start now place that on the platform most of you have this kind of platform and check the angle now you can place it and spin the wheel a bit and you get to see the reflection where you at now gouge flute on the rest and I'm going to bring it up the wheel so I'm resting here at this point this corner and I'm going to put it up up the wheel like so and I'm going to rock it back and forth a bit so I get a curved wing which is at least in my case, uh, I prefer a little bit a curve in a wing than a straight one. So place it upside down and just light, lightly. Now you can see the fingernail profile getting shaped. to get the wings sharpened first so I put the gouge hard on the uh, tool rest the foot the inside foot here is parallel with the rest since this is um, straight wing ball gouge or big gouge and I don't want to go past that just light motion, you can check it, cool it down if needed, if you have a CBN you won't have to cool it down as, more, as much as I have. When I'm, done, when I'm done with the wing, I drop the handle and rotate it the gouge in my hand to get it to this point so like that 
and like that. And the same obviously goes from this side. I'm going to do the right wing first. In the CBM, you have to have a light touch. And press hard on the tool rest. And now this is much more, for me at least, more usable shape of the gouge and uh, more versatile. And you can do a lot more with it. Big, it's around six mil or quarter of an inch I'm going to reduce it all the way around pretty much and uh, I just do it by by hand since this is getting a bit smaller now now it's probably wheel around six and a half inches or so so I want to reduce the, the, the bevel <laughs> sharp ready to use ball gouge as you can see I reduced the length of the bevel all the way around and uh, now it's much more effective and um, I won't have uh, too much of a hollow in the in the bevel and now uh, this is all night nice and tidy and neat uh, with the practice you can do it with the platform like this and uh, uh, you get a lovely edge like this now when I'm doing with my as usual with the asymmetric grind and uh, sharpening the way I usually do in my hand like this it's a little bit more rougher edge but still cuts beautifully and um, this is more like uh, from the jig you know and uh, like this is much more involved um, you get much more feel for it and that feel can translate to the lathe which is uh, what I like and uh, what I like about freehand sharpening here we are at the lathe I have here a small uh, pair blank uh, we can put it by or so on it just tighten it up a bit so what I like to do I don't like a push cut to um, rough shape a ball I much uh, find um, I find much more efficient using a wing here and uh, use all of that wing now you can put um, a longer wing here now similar thing we're going to do here now I'm running at twelve fifty twelve four so I'm uh, going to use the wing now. As you can see, in one go I can take almost, what's that, like half an inch maybe, even more. And so. And that's this small bowl uh, roughed out in uh, three cuts. Uh, foot on the rest needs to go up a bit now for the record power chuck the smaller one I have uh, the sides needs to be uh, straight it doesn't require a dovetail or anything like that and uh, now if you want to do a finishing cut a push cut let's say we can do that so you put the 
flute around 45 degrees so this will be uh, straight up and down this would be zero this is 45 and you control the cut by this little bevel here like so now that's really clean cut as you can see here so I moved the camera a little bit further back that I was hitting the handle as I'm coming here so I can increase the speed now this is all true up and I'm um, 1500 RPM so find the cut here and so ridges can send out easily the tear out grain not so much so i use a wing of the tool either a ball gouge or spindle gouge uh, to rough shape the ball then i'm using a push cut or shear cut to finish it off it's much faster for me at least then like i use push cut to rough it and uh, i don't need a clean cut for uh, for, for roughing out now if you have like uh, this ridge here i can use the the wing as a shear scraper usual gouge position is uh, handle goes into hip i hold it here at the ferrule and uh, that's why i use it now for the shear scraping uh, the handle needs to go down uh, even past the a little between let's say a knee and the hip use the 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 wing of the tool to shear scrape it and you get this beautiful surface as well not sure if you can see the change in color and you can refine the outside of the shape of the bowl using this technique now that's pretty much the best surface you can have on the piece of wood like so This is a mesh which works a little bit better with uh, green wood. Uh, like a few seconds with the uh, 120 grit, and as you can see, the surface is nice and clean uh, now to clean this surface up or to level it uh, the best way is to use or uh, use two ways to the wing like this which is more of a scrape cut or you can use just the left of the point which is more of a cutting action and you can probably hear the difference hopefully let's do it again so this is scraping cutting so here as well uh, you need a bevel support so you don't need all that force Oh, 
hopefully I didn't flash the camera. So let's shape the rim here. And let's say, let's make a finishing cut here. Now for the insides, it's mostly push cut all, all the time. Um, so that's nice and clean. Now let's reshape this gouge to um, rough and asymmetric grind, which I much more prefer. This grind has its benefits, but uh, like I said, I like using uh, asymmetric grind uh, because for me at least it's much more superior in hollowing and uh, if you put a longer wing like this on it as well, it's great for outside a shaping of a ball so to do that i need to uh, shape it a bit first so i need a shorter right wing now i'm going to waste a little bit of steel or i can shape it now as it is and as i continue to use the tool i'll get to desired shape but now i want to show you how i would change to a rough and rough and asymmetric grind so i like to first shorten this a bit Finish it here. So I find the bevel. Now you can polish up a flute inside a little bit and now we can get to finishing sharpening a light touch Now this wing will get a little bit more longer, but now I want to uh, half the bevel. Like so. I get the lead with a rough and asymmetric grind. Now I can reduce the the height using the right wing. It's excellent and at uh, plowing off material. As you can see, now I can use it as a shear scraper as well. Like that. What it's much better is going into end grain, although it's said you never need, you never do that, but uh, there are some occasions like this where I get much more clean cut. It acts like a traditional grind from the bottom of the flute to the right and more of a long grind uh, from the bottom of the foot or uh, the flute to the left. Now I can make this a lot thinner it's much more stable for taking bigger cuts and what I like about it by only 
twisting my hand and closing the flute even further I get a nice sheer cut from the right wing uh, point just uh, more down to the wing right wing so it looks like this Now let's do it. Um, perhaps I will be able to. On this. I can't stop this lathe by hand. <laughs> The gouge we sharpened. Now I want to take lighter cuts here. Let's try to make to blend these two surfaces and make a bowl without a Put on since I'm a bit low here. Now the difference difference in color you see here. This is now freshly cut, so it uh, has moisture. This has time to uh, surface dry. So that will even out. Now let's just get it off. There. Yeah. You can put it 